Michael is about to sit his final year 12 exams. However, rather than doing practice exams to boost his actual ATAR, he spends most of his time calculating his imaginary one. But what Michael doesn't understand is that toggling the numbers on some random study score calculator doesn't actually it affect his final scores. <laughs> hey everyone, so it is approaching exams, and I know this can be very stressful. And so this video is going to cover my three-step approach for exam revision and how to make the most out of your time. Most people only focus on the visible things like doing practice exams because it's relatively easier to see. But when it comes to the invisible things like mindset, it becomes much more challenging, even though the invisible plays a crucial role in overcoming our biggest obstacle, procrastination. And more specifically, I wanted to talk about these emotional states that we might encounter during our revision. And so success in exam revision comes down to how well we can overcome these emotions, because as you may have guessed, all of these lead to delays and procrastination. And to do so, we need to first realize that this isn't the logical part of your brain speaking, because our brain contains two key areas, our reptile brain and our frontal neocortex. Now, I don't wanna to go too much into the neuroscience, but just know that the reptile brain is powered by the amygdala. And this is the part of the brain that creates all these emotions when it doesn't want you to do anything uncomfortable like doing practice exams. And this leads us to watching just one more YouTube video. But deep down, most of us probably feel a sense of guilt when we procrastinate. And this is coming from our frontal neocortex. This is the smarter, more sophisticated part of our brain. And this is involved in complex decision-making and deep down, it knows exactly what we should be doing. And so to get the frontal neocortex to take over and shut down the reptile brain, only two words are needed, and these are getting started. Because once we get started with, let's say, a practice exam, our frontal neocortex starts taking more and more control of the steering wheel. So it doesn't matter if you're falling behind or you did well or you did bad on the test during the semester, what matters now is your final exam score. And to change this, the only two words you need is getting started, whether that be getting started with a question or writing one sentence. And you don't need an intricate timetable that organizes every microsecond of your day. And you don't need to feel motivated or to enjoy it because motivation and enjoyment come from after completing something rather than being the prerequisite. And so when it all boils down, the people that end up doing great on their exams are those who are able to just get started now because they know that tomorrow translates to never. So that's my first tip, rule your mind or it will rule you. So after being able to master your mindset and get started, the question now becomes, how do I actually approach my exam revision? And short answer is there's not necessarily a correct approach, but I'll go over the method that I had the greatest success with. First, I like to review all my notes just to refresh myself on everything that I've learned this year because sometimes for me, I would forget that certain areas or concepts even existed. But this step only took a few days because the bulk of my revision was centered around doing practice exams. And I aim to do at least one to two exams across all my subjects per day. And even if you're feeling a bit shaky, get started with practice exams because the quality of questions is unparalleled to any other questions that you might find. With that being said, there were three main ways that I did practice exams and each way focuses on a particular goal. And this is because when we try to go in too many directions at once or do too many things, we don't end up traveling that far. But if we just focus on going in one direction, then we can go much further. So the first way to do practice exams is to focus on refreshing our understanding of the topic. And here, I like to do some older exams or company exams such as TSSM or NEEP. And I would do these untimed since the main focus here is to get used to the style of questions, as well as identify anything you don't know so you can go back and review them. And especially if you haven't reviewed the content that much during the year, like me, your first practice exam might be extremely awkward. And I remember not being able to answer most of the questions. But whenever I got stuck on a question, which is most of the time, I would go back to my notes, understand and review. And yes, it did take a while to get that first practice exam done, but after that, the time exponentially decreased as I got more and more practice. But overall at this stage, we want to focus on one thing during our exams, and that is to refresh our understanding of the concepts. After you feel a bit more confident with the concepts, the next way to do practice exams is probably what you're used to, and that is to do them under the time limit 
and exam conditions. And the majority of exams that I did were done in this way. But the important thing here is not so much the number, but rather how do you review them? That is how you improve after doing each practice. So first I would look at the solutions and annotate my exam with the correct answers and reasoning as if I was the teacher. Next, I look at what I got wrong. If it was because of time, then I want to keep practicing. But if it was because of a concept that I didn't understand, I want to write that question down in my notes. And this is very important, writing down the questions that you got wrong or redoing them. And this is because you'll be surprised how many times I got a very similar question wrong next time when I didn't do this. And this is because there's a massive difference between recognizing an answer and actually understanding it. And for subjects such as science and maths, I would have a notebook dedicated for the mistakes I made during my exams. And before my actual exam, this was the one resource that I reviewed the most. And this helped me avoid any similar mistakes in my actual exam. As you are reviewing each exam and tracking your errors, you might realize there are certain questions that you keep getting wrong over and over again. So now we arrive at the final way to do practice exams. For example, in maths, I would always get those longer application questions wrong. And so what I did was I did tens of practice exams only doing these questions and skipping everything else. And so what I did here was I kept drilling in on this skill until I felt more confident. So it's kind of like one of those pens with four colors. If let's say we run out of the blue pen, so the blue ink, then yes, we could buy another pen with all four colors, or it would be more economical to just specifically buy a blue pen. The point here is you need to be doing practice exams. However, you don't need to always be doing full practice exams. You can just pick one area to focus on, or in our analogy, pick the color that you need the most. So these are the three ways to do practice exams, not necessarily in this order. Sometimes you might want to switch back and forth depending on what you want to work on. Now, of course, it's important to recover and not burn out. So here are just some important things to keep in mind. First, in the book Deep Work, the author talks about how we can only do four hours of focused work each day. And it was no different for me. But this didn't mean that I only studied for four hours each day, but rather I would do four hours of focused work doing practice exams. And then I spent the rest of my time doing some light study, like looking over the answers and correcting my exams, which was less strenuous in my opinion. Next tip is exercise, and lots of benefits again, but just to point out one, regardless of what you do, so jogging, any sport, lifting, they all improve blood flow to the brain. And more blood means more nutrients and more growth for our nerve cells involved in neurological processes. And so as Jocko Willink puts it, working out makes you smarter. And final tip, the silver bullet to exam success, and that is sleep. So yes, it's probably been overstated, but it's crucial to maintain a consistent schedule. And rather than focusing on waking up early, which you can't really control, try and focus on sleeping early, which you definitely have more control over. So to summarize, here are a list of actionable steps that I took during exam revision. First, review all my notes for the course. Second, do practice exams initially to review all the concepts. Then do practice exams to simulate exam conditions. And finally, do practice exams to drill into areas of weakness. And of course, recovery. And it's just important to note that you might want to reduce the amount of practice exams that you do two to three days before your actual one. That way you just don't burn out. So that is all, hope that was helpful. And in the coming weeks, I'll have videos covering individual subjects. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, all the best for your exams and take care.